Okay, the the uh, this is uh, Calicat the Calicatster, and this is um, the yeah, this is a uh, Star Trek Discovery of uh, season four, episode five. The examples, middle of the season. I think it's probably roughly in the middle of the season. Uh, in this one, they have an A story where they have a colony that's they used to be evacuated, and they they're these aliens. Um, funny things on the sides of their faces. Uh, uh, they have some political prisoners down in the brig and Burnham and Book go to rescue the prisoners against orders from the bad guys. Uh, we got David Cronenberg as the, uh, the counselor guy who talks to the... Uh, who's been around on the other episodes. That was the guy from the other one with the big fla thick glasses. You'd think that in the distant future they wouldn't have glasses or any need for them. But, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, but, uh, but they do, apparently. <laughs> um, uh, they rescue the prisoners. They find out from the prisoner, book, Berman and Brooke find out from the prisoners that, that four of them are apparently uh, made petty crimes of various kinds. We stole something and somebody uh, joyrided in a helicopter, ornithopter, re referencing um, a dune. Uh, some other people <laughs> did other, thing, other things. Um, and the one of the ships in the beginning was the Janeway, and it was a Vulcan ship too. So you get to see the Janeway, the Vulcan ship. Very Cal Cat looking design, the Janeway. Um, <laughs> but it's not. Um, it is. Um, but yeah, the yeah. Uh, hmm. So the B story is them trying to create a model of the the the, the thing, the uh, uh, the the space critter, the DNA, the. The, the DNA, the DMA, the, the anomaly, dark matter anomaly, DMA, something like DNA, uh, which is impossible. Um, but yeah, they discover that it is actually a construct that somebody built it uh, to do bad things. Um, yeah, it's a Cillian device, obviously. It's from, from a rogue Cillian overlord. It's going to show up. Uh, we meet the, uh, the brilliant guy, scientist dude on the ship. Uh, who is, who has, uh, and we also see the, the, uh, we sci brilliant scientist dude, but we also meet the, uh, the, the sassy, uh, engineer lady. She comes back. She's on the ship. She's wearing a gold uniform. Uh, Stamus is wearing a dark blue uniform. Uh, the counselor guy, the doctor counselor, he, uh, he talks to the Cronenberg guy about... It's not actually... It's the actor playing him as Cronenberg, but I don't know what they call him. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And basically, uh, because the uh, Dr. Kolber had been killed and then was resurrected in space, has weird feelings of a complex going on. Although he doesn't like it. Whereas if he was a Sicilian, he would like it. Anyway, so, so the, the the brilliant scientist guy has a a mark on the back of his neck. It looks like the emerald chain mark. I think that's what that is. Uh, he didn't create the wormhole thing because it would probably a hypergiant star to create the wormhole thing. Which really doesn't make any sense. They're just throwing stuff out. And why does it look like the Eye of Sauron? Uh, yeah. Could it be the mirror universe? Mm. I still maintain that it's possible that the that the other version of the the uh, time suit, which no doubt the uh, other lady gave up or the, or the control of the time suit, uh, the from the the Red Angel, the other one which wasn't destroyed, is is somehow involved in this and is part of the whole thing. Hmm. Somehow it's involved. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing. And also, it's Zillion Overlords. Hmm. Oh, yeah. But we've already had an episode with a, a, a Jamie Messy type character on a station that got killed. So now we have a sort of a Callum that, that guy guy on there. Callum going from Pine Hill as well. Um, <laughs> on the other one, um, I did not write any of these. Um, it's a coincidence. And, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're, they're, uh, 
and Burnham rescues all but one prison, leaves one prisoner behind who had taken a device from one of the killed the father of one of the colonists and that's why he's in jail um, in the prison and he stays behind they find the colonist is now a refugee on the station and Burnham gives her the gives him a little trinket with the family tree inside it because apparently it's an ad for like ancestry.com throw it in there because I'm sure uh, <laughs> a number of other things Oh yeah, and the, the guy, uh, the, the genius guy is from uh, Risa. <laughs> uh, yeah, which they imply is a fake planet. The story, sort of a make-believe TV planet. And, and 500 years, uh, 800 years later, probably is uh, even faker. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Risa. Um, hmm, so they reference Risa. For anyway, so it's just, it's, um, fine. It's an all right episode. It has, you know, it, <laughs> it's, uh, the, uh, the, there were some scenes where they were talking very softly that was annoying. There were also some scenes where, where they, they, they uh, so, well, Cobra and Stamets have good chemistry in, in the story. Um, they, they do them well. Uh, the teenager was not in it at all this time. Or her robot boyfriend he wasn't in it either. They weren't in this one. Um, <laughs> um, did they go to the academy with, with Tilly? I don't know. Um, anyway, so that's the review, pretty much. Uh, kind of did a rundown of it. Didn't really say with what's, uh, you know, it's fine. It's okay. Star Trek episode. And typical, you know, rescue the prisoners from the planet and escape story. Not, not nothing throwing in the anomalous thing which is scientifically impossible now there was a weird scene in which um the uh, the genius guy shouted at at uh, Saru and then Saru got him to shout back and Saru shouting back was weird um because he really wasn't in on it <laughs> uh, that was an odd thing to do um I think that's reminiscent of the old um Back in the day, computer programmer meetings where they would do that. Somebody would shout at the boss or the guy would shout back. Uh, but uh, it's odd that it's on a spaceship in the 30, 3190s, early 3190s, that they would do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really odd. Um. Anyway, so. Yeah. And uh, I heard that we would continue to write the novelization of. Last season of Starship Below um, Strange Worlds. Yeah, very slowly. It's taking a lot of time. We want to make it look, you know, cool as a novel. So. Anyway, so yeah, that'll, that'll be on Amazon when it is ready. Yeah, and season two will be uh, uh, already adapting an already existing novel, so we don't need to make a novelization of that one. But season one, there is no novel of it, but there soon will be. Mm. Yeah, Strange Worlds. Not Strange New Worlds, Strange Worlds. Anyway. Mm.